before we get into the history of Louis Riel and the creation of Manitoba, let's start with some backstory on Riel. He was born October 22, 1844 and was the oldest of 11 children. He grew up in the settlement known as Red River, the precursor to what is now known as Winnipeg. Riel found himself taking after his father to study to become a priest in Montreal. After his father's death, Riel dropped out of college but stuck around Montreal. Now that you know a little bit about Riel, let's get into the formation of Manitoba, also known as the Red River Rebellion. Louis Riel came back to the Red River settlement just in time to stop a land survey led by one William McDougall. A Métis National Council was formed by John Bruce to gather the voices and concerns of the Métis. Discussion began between Canada and the National Council. The Métis were worried they would be pushed off their land, so Riel led an uprising and seized control of Upper Fort Garry. With this, the Hudson's Bay Governor McTavish ordered the Métis to lay down their arms, so Riel proposed a provisional government. Ownership of Rupert's land transferred from the Hudson's Bay Company to Canada. The provisional government is formed with John Bruce as its president, later replaced by Louis Riel himself after Bruce fell ill. Negotiations began between Canada and the Métis provisional government. The Métis came up with a list of rights to negotiate a formal annexation. While this was happening, Riel's guardsmen arrested 48 armed men calling themselves Canadians. Thomas Scott was among those 48 arrested. He was described as crude and attempted escape multiple times. Thomas Scott was executed by the provisional government. After some back and forth between the Métis and Canada, the Manitoba Act is passed and receives royal assent. Manitoba is now a province. Shortly after the Act is passed, the Wolseley Expedition comes to confront Riel for executing Thomas Scott. Louis Riel flees south and settles across the border. Riel didn't stay in the States for long, this time, and quietly returned home. There was an attempted raid by the Fenian from the U.S. border, and Riel gathered a Métis cavalry to prove his commitment to keep peace with Canada. There were mixed feelings surrounding Riel in Ontario. He was widely known as a murderer and a $5,000 bounty was put on his head. But in Quebec, in Manitoba, he was a hero defending the Métis, French culture, and the Catholic faith. Because of this, Riel was elected into the House of Commons on three different occasions. The federal government approved a motion that Louis Riel was to be banished from Her Majesty's dominions for five years. He found himself in Montana and reintegrated himself with the Métis down south. While in exile, he became an American citizen and married Marguerite Monet de Bellemer. They had three children together. Now we're going to dive into the Northwest Resistance and the Battle of Batoche. Many indigenous groups were suffering due to low bison population. Their land was being signed away through treaties and towns farmland and railroads were pushing them out. The Métis were experiencing low crop harvests and the fur trade was slowing to a crawl. A man named Gabriel Dumas was especially dissatisfied with Canada's lack of action and reached out to Louis Riel in hopes of him aiding them with his past experience negotiating with Canada. Riel agreed under the terms of bringing his family to him with Batoche as well as being able to return to Montana once negotiations were complete. History repeats itself and the provisional government of Saskatchewan is formed with Louis Riel as president and they try to negotiate with Canada. They were ignored and the Métis organized the 300 men battalion and moved to seize the Hudson's Bay Post in Fort Carleton. The Métis' first battle in the Northwest Resistance is known as the Battle of Duck Lake. A large group of Métis and First Nations faced the force of the Northwest Mounted Police. The Métis and First Nations won and returned to Batoche. With the loss at Duck Lake, the Canadian government formed a militia to deal with Louis Riel and the Métis once and for all. The plan was simple, march all the Canadian troops to Batoche. Louis Riel caught word of the Canadians' plans and sought to focus all of his men in defending Batoche. 
Gabriel Dumas had a different idea, cut them off with a surprise attack. Dumas won the argument and the Métis force moved to confront the Canadians. This fight is known as the Battle of Fish Creek. The Canadians tried to fight off the Métis resistors but suffered heavy casualties and retreated. Now begins the Battle of Batoche and, spoiler alert, it doesn't end well for the Métis. On May 9th, the Canadian general, Frederick Middleton, commanded his forces to attack the southern end of Batoche. Day after day, Middleton would attack and retreat, attack and retreat. On May 12th, the Métis were overrun, largely due to being short on ammunition. Louis Riel surrendered on May 15th. Riel was formally charged with treason and his trial began in Regina. Riel's lawyer was trying to excuse Riel on the grounds of insanity due to a time he spent in asylum in 1876. Riel didn't want to be excused because of insanity as he believed it would discredit the Métis and their mistreatment by the Canadian government. After un undergoing a psych evaluation, Riel was deemed sane and was later charged guilty and the jury recommended clemency, but it was overruled in favor of execution. So that's it, isn't it? Riel's wife Marguerite moved to live with Riel's family and later died of tuberculosis. Their three children all passed before being able to have kids of their own. His legacy is over. But remember, Riel was the eldest of 11 siblings who were able to have children of their own. Marguerite also had siblings who had their kids. That's not to say his legacy only lives through his family. Every Métis person carries his legacy. We look upon him with gratitude and he helps solidify the Métis as people, not just half-breeds. He saved lives and defended the ones that didn't have a voice. And that's why he's a hero.